Hello and welcome to Unwind Sessions where right after my shift I give the highlights of my workday and answer any questions that might have been asked at a previous session. My name is Juan, I am an English, Spanish, medical video, remote consecutive interpreter with over four years of experience and today is Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. Today I took a total of 33 sessions just to mix like always video and audio so it was a pretty straightforward day however there are two highlights that i would like to mention before we get to the main topic of this video now to start off i would like to introduce you to a new word that i learned today and that word is hydrocele now the definition from the mayoclinic.org is that hydrocele is a type of swelling in the scrotum that occurs when fluid collects in the thin sheet surrounding a testicle so it's like a pocket of fluid that comes out in the testicle sort of like a cyst is what the doctor said and they were treating a gentleman today because he had a, a high fever and they didn't know where it was coming he had pain in the testicle as well but they didn't know where the fever was coming from and they thought that it could be from this hydrocele that they actually found and they, this was a, a coincidental finding so it was not what they were looking for but it was something that was there and they were going to test it to see if that was causing an infection so the word for today is hydrocele and the Spanish translation for hydrocele is just the same, uh, hidrocele. And I'm sorry I forgot to write that down. Um, my head's not all there today. But anyways, uh, hydrocele, uh, H-Y-D-R-O-C-E-L-E -E in English. I think in Spanish is, is the same. I don't remember how to spell it, but I remember that it's said the same just with the Spanish pronunciation, hidrocele. So moving on to my second highlight today, and you guys are not gonna believe it, but today it happened. This is like the third time in my whole interpreting career that this has ever happened, but a nurse actually went ahead and said esophagogastroduodenoscopy, esophago, oh, I can't even say it anymore esophago gastro duodenoscopy so i know that i mentioned this in a previous online session so just be on the lookout for that word that is probably the longest word that you are going to have to interpret it and you're going to have to remember it now in the other video i mentioned that most of the time they just say egd in english but in spanish there is no shortened version no abbreviation so you are going to have to say esophago gastro duodenoscopia i don't know about any other languages but that is one of the words that you have have to know because it's going to save your life if you actually are ready ahead of time because it's gonna come up like i told you it's not that often that it comes up but it will and if you're a spanish interpreter you, every time you say egd which is a very common procedure you are going to have to know that that is that very long word which i'm not gonna try to say anymore today <laughs> all right so moving on to the main topic of this video and we are finally with the last part of this session which is 10 must know OBGYN vocabulary words part 3 and before I get to the vocabulary words and all that stuff let me remind you that we have a Patreon page where we have a lot a lot of goodies and if you support us with just one dollar you have access to all of the goodies we don't have any tiers yet we will have tiers in the future and you can find vocabulary lists for a lot of uh, specialties uh, medical specialties they each vocabulary list has 50 vocabulary words so they are a must buy I would suggest that you go ahead and get those vocabulary lists and uh, they're just a dollar that's all that we're asking for we want to keep this affordable for everyone 
So we hope to have your support and of course with your support you help us to create much more content and to remain motivated to keep on doing this, right? So let's get to it. What you came to see, 10 must know OBGYN vocabulary words part 3. Now the following definitions were provided by, well they don't know what, they weren't provided by nobody. I took them from rosemark.net and mayoclinic.org. So let's get started. Now the first must know OVGYN vocabulary word of the day is apneosynthesis. Apneosynthesis. Syn syn oh, what's wrong with me today? Apneosynthesis. Synthesis. Apneosynthesis. It's a mouthful. Uh, so, <clears throat> anyways. Uh, what is amniocentesis? Amniocentesis is a procedure in which a small amount of amniotic fluid is taken from the sac surrounding the fetus and tested. Now, what does this mean? Now, when a woman is pregnant, sometimes during pregnancy, they detect some abnormalities depending on the ultrasound and all of the testing they do to the fetus. And uh, they are able to test some genetic diseases and whenever they have a suspicion for a genetic disease in the baby the way that they can test to do this is that they actually put a needle inside of the woman's womb to be able to draw out that liquid and that liquid that they take out is going to show the doctors what genetic diseases a baby may have and this is a highly accurate test but however it is not 100 percent accurate and one of the major risks of this is that it can actually cause a miscarriage so if they do it it can actually cause um, a natural abortion of the fetus so uh, it's the view on this is mixed i've had patients that they just want to do it they just want to know what genetic defects the baby has and other folks they just say well i don't want to risk losing my baby so no way i'm getting that done but i mean that is a test that everyone has available to them and most of the time they don't even mention it on theirs there is suspicion for like a, a, a very serious genetic disease so that was amniocentesis vocabulary word number one and vocabulary word number two oophorectomy now you might remember this word from yesterday's video if you haven't seen it i suggest you watch part one and part two to this video because there is a lot of really good stuff for beginning your interpreters and so uh, an oophorectomy, like I mentioned yesterday, is a surgical procedure to remove one or both ovaries. Now there's a lot of things, a lot of diseases that can, or a lot of conditions that can affect the ovaries that need to get them removed. Like ovarian cancer, for example, is like a very serious thing that would require an oophorectomy, but there's a, a severe case with PCOS, uh, or a really big cyst or all kinds of stuff that can uh, just happen to the ovaries that will have to get them removed to improve the quality of life for that person or to improve the chances of survival or just plain getting them rid of disease, right? So that was number two, oophorectomy. And uh, number three is pelvic exam. Now, a pelvic exam is an examination of a woman's internal and external reproductive organs. So, this is a pretty routine exam when a woman goes into the GYN and uh, to the OB as well, right? Because they have to see like um, the, the pelvic area. They have to examine all of that area to make sure um, everything is good and of course if a, if a woman is going to the GYN is because there's something wrong with her female parts right it could also be her breast but most of the time is going to be uh, her genitals right and all of her reproductive organs so 
um, most of the time you are going to need to interpret pelvic exam because I guarantee you that most of the time is what they are going to do to check them out and a pelvic exam is different from a um, vaginal exam or a vaginal ultrasound or a pelvic ultrasound because a pelvic ultrasound is just done from the pelvis like from the belly they try to see everything from there and uh, when whenever they have to see something more in depth that they are always going to do a pelvic exam and then uh, if they need to see something more in depth that they need to do a vaginal ultrasound then that is the second thing that they are going to do but for sure for sure most of the time um, when a woman goes to the GYN she will get a pelvic exam depending on her symptoms right um, and uh, another one uh, Number four, uh, can you see that? Yeah, yeast, hold on, where is it here? Yeast infection. Now, this is not um, limited to a OBGYN session, but let me read you the definition. Um, an infection causing mild to intolerable vulvar or vaginal itching or burning in females. The male partner may also have symptoms. So this is like a, an infection caused by yeast, right? Or some type of fungus. And uh, now <laughs> this brings memories of my high school sex education class because I remember our teacher mentioned that women are prone to getting vaginal yeast infections because I mean uh, um, a vagina pretty much has everything that yeast needs to survive like it's humid it's hot and it's dark right so those are like the perfect conditions for yeast to grow so I mean, a yeast infection in a woman is something that is very, very common and something that you will have to interpret in some moment. So make sure that you know your target language interpretation for that. And moving on to the next word, number five, HPV, which is the human papilloma virus. And the definition for that is um, also known as HPV. The common name for a group of related viruses, some of which cause genital warts and are, and are linked to cervical changes and cancer. Now, I find the human papilloma virus to be kind of strange because it's something that it is uh, highly common and um, the from everything that I've learned in medical interpretation is that a lot of males have the HPV virus but they have no symptoms it's not until they have intercourse with a woman that they can actually spread it to the woman but if a woman has the HPV virus she does not necessarily need to have any symptoms or develop cancer or anything a woman can have the HPV virus for her whole life without ever having any symptoms or any problems but there are some times when a woman will actually start to develop symptoms and she can it can lead to cervical cancer and uh, like changes like you said in the definition of the cervix so this is a virus which I find very strange because it doesn't affect the whole population but it is something that needs to be checked constantly and monitored in case it is detected so that it doesn't become uh, cancer or something uh, more serious. All right, and number six, dilation. And now dilation is the stretching of the walls of the cervix so that the opening of the cervix is widened. So yesterday I explained a little what 
the cervix is and what is its purpose. So its purpose is to close the vagina from the womb, right, from the, the uterus. And it, it prevents like the contents of the uterus from coming out, right? And uh, it, it allows it to come out sometimes, like for example, periods and uh, for giving birth as well. And uh, sometimes uh, dilation is needed, for example, when they need to put in uh, an IUD, they need to dilate the cervix because if it's not dilated, there's no way that IUD is getting inside of the uterus unless they actually do that. Another thing why they would need to dilate is, for example, uh, the induction of labor, vocabulary word, the induction of labor, and uh, what this means is that when a woman is actually going to give birth, sometimes they give her some hormones or they, they give her some medicine so that her cervix would dilate and open to allow the baby to come out for a vaginal delivery. And if that has no effect, then what they do is they need to do a c-section if they need to get the baby out but sometimes when the lady comes in and she's ready to give birth and everything but she wants a vaginal delivery but she's not dilated yet they will try to dilate her to be able to give a vaginal birth so that is one very important vocabulary word that you are going to see many 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 times number seven courage a uh, carotage is a procedure in which a sample of the endometrium is removed with a small spoon-shaped instrument. Carotage, or carotage, carotage. I don't know, I think I'm saying it wrong, carotage. Um, that's a hard word for me to pronounce, but I mean, you can see how it's spelled. And uh, what this is, is that they go inside of the uterus, they have to dilate the cervix and then they go inside of the uterus to actually remove uh, a sample of the endometrium, like to take a sample um, for many, many reasons, just to see if there's anything wrong with the endometrium or if a lady is having uh, very heavy periods, they can see what is going on or why that's happening with just a little sample of the endometrium that can give them a better answers to treat whatever condition um, a female might be having. So that is dilation and, I mean, I'm sorry, that's courage. And I'm gonna give you a bonus word here, guys, which is actually a mix of number six and seven, and I didn't count it. I was going to give you dilation and curtage, which is a vocabulary term, also known as D and C. And it's, it's basically a, a mix of these two things. So they dilate and they do the curtage. But in this case, they are not trying to take a sample. What they're actually trying to do is they're trying to remove the 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 lining of the uterus, the endometrium, endomet endometrium. They're trying to re uh, to take the endometrium out. Or in case of a miscarriage, sometimes the body doesn't get rid of all the waste product from the failed pregnancy, and uh, they have to give the ladies uh, some sort of medicine to try to for the body to expel all of that. But if they don't want to take the medicine, another thing that they can do, because if they leave that there, that could be potentially dangerous to a woman. So what they will do is they will do the dilation and curtage. So they will dilate and they will go in there with this spoon-shaped instrument and they will scrape all of the inside of the uterus to be able to take that out all of that waste product right so that the woman can be in good health and then after uh, some period of time she can go ahead and try for pregnancy if that is her wishes now dnc is not only limited to that for example if a woman is having like very very heavy periods one thing that they can do is that they can actually do dilation and curtage to try and reduce like the endometrium at that point so that the ladies periods are not that he that ladies period is not that heavy 
but that is not the end of it. They will have to do other things if they want to control a, a heavy bleeding, for example. So that is a bonus vocabulary word, dilation and courage, D and C. So going back to the list, number eight. And number eight is, uh, can you focus on that? Ectopic pregnancy. And what is an ectopic pregnancy? An ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy in which the fertilized egg begins to grow in a place other than inside the uterus, usually in the fallopian tube. So an ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy that is not going to develop well and it could be life-threatening to the mother. So for the most part, they will require an abortion and it, it's something that can potentially be like very, very bad. And I've had some cases like a, a baby w has to develop inside of the uterus for the pregnancy to be successful. But sometimes um, like the the egg does not make it out of the fallopian tube and the sperm makes it in there so it ovulates um, no it doesn't ovulate it fertilizes the egg and then the pregnancy just happens there like in the fallopian tube so you can imagine how devastating that could be because the fallopian tube is only designed to let the egg out of there right to make it fall into the uterus where it needs to get fertilized and the baby can develop healthy there but if that doesn't happen um, the baby will start to develop in the fallopian tube so you can imagine like a baby growing inside of a fallopian tube like that is devastating and I had a case once where a lady had a an ectopic pregnancy and uh, the baby, well, the fetus it grew so large that it actually, they had to just cut out that fallopian tube because it totally destroyed her. So the lady only had uh, like one working ovary that was attached to a fallopian tube and she was still trying to get pregnant. But of course, since she only had one ovary, this complicated her um her ability to get pregnant, right? So she had to go to a fertility clinic and they were helping her out. So um, ectopic pregnancies, they are very common and they are one uh, a must know vocabulary word. Number nine, menopause. Now yesterday I talked a little bit about a menopause. The definition is the time in a woman's life when the ovaries stop functioning and menstruation stops. Now yesterday we talked about estrogen that ovaries um, make the estrogen hormone to promote the growth of the endometrium, right? So the ovaries are the ones that promote the endometrium and that cause the period to make sure that the uterus is always fresh and good enough to have a successful pregnancy but um, the ovaries do um, like uh, we know they are not producing this hormone forever at some point in a woman's life the they are going to start to stop producing hormones and when this happens then the menopause stops the woman can no longer get pregnant the woman will no longer have a period and there are a lot of changes that happen during this period because of course it's a hormone that is no longer produced in the body so you can uh, you can expect there to be changes right and the one thing that comes to mind i'm not an expert of menopause but it's hot flashes and irritability and a lot of other things but this is not a video about menopause so i'm gonna stop right there and i'm going to move to vocabulary word number 10 number 10 laparoscopy now a laparoscopy is a surgical procedure in which a slender light transmitting instrument the laparoscope is used to view the pelvic organs now a laparoscopy is not limited only to OBGYN sessions. They could do uh, a laparoscopic 
um, removal of the gallbladder or many 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 other surgeries they could do laparoscopically thanks to the technology and advancement of uh, science and that is something awesome because they just have to like make like three little incisions in the belly and then they just put air inside of the belly and the air the belly fills up full of air and they just put in their little instruments like through those little holes and they have a camera and they can see everything if you go into you well, here youtube <laughs> and you actually go ahead and look at uh, um, videos from uh, the peroscopic surgeries you are going to get a, a great idea of what this is and this is wonderful why do i say this is wonderful because before this was invented the only way that they could do a surgery is just making the huge cut right like a cut like this big and uh, that was it like you would have a huge scar on your belly for whatever reason uh, that for whatever surgery that you needed to be done and uh, well of course uh, um, aesthetically it doesn't look that good right but I mean who cares if they're saving your life right but I mean this is something nice that they can just do it with uh, tiny little incisions and uh, they don't really have to open up and it's not that much of a big uh, stomach wound that actually uh, belly wound I'm sorry uh, or abdomen wound that actually has to heal so I find it wonderful now one of the risks that they mention when they're doing a laparoscopic surgery is that if it fails or for some reason they need to do like the good old incision big old cut then they will have to do that and that is one of the risks but i mean if it was me that's a risk i'm willing to accept right so that is it those are the 10 words and i'm going to show them to you one more time abneusynthesis Oophorectomy, amniocentesis, oophorectomy, pelvic exam, yeast infection, human papillomavirus, dilation, curtage, dilation and curtage, uh, ectopic pregnancy, menopause, and laparoscopy. So that is going to be pretty much it for me today. That is going to be the end of this three part session and I will be coming back with other medical specialties and vocabulary words so expect more in the future so please leave your questions in the comments and I will answer some of them on the next session remember that I'll be here every Monday through Friday after work and also I would like to remind you that we have a patreon page where with as little as one dollar you can help motivate us you can support us and we will be creating much more content for you if you make this possible and what do you get for those what that one dollar you get all of the goodies that we have in there all of the medical practice videos free of those annoying ads we have scripts we have answer sheets to the medical practice videos we have a vocabulary list like this the hr 50 words and much more content and of course the most important thing that you will win a sacred place inside of our heart and we will love you forever so thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you like the video for much much more content and don't forget to share happy interpreting goodbye